الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أتمان على أتمان على أشرف المرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We give thanks to him We seek forgiveness from him We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist us we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon our beloved messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his wives, his sahaba and those who follow his righteous steps until the day of the judgment brothers and sisters of Islam it is a blessing to have with us this evening one of the prominent students of Sheikh Ahmed Gidat, a renowned Italian <coughs> preacher, who is not only known here in America or in American continent, but he's also known in Africa, in Europe. And Sheikh Muhammad Awad has been given down specifically to non-Muslims, inviting them to Islam for about 27 years. And Alhamdulillah, through his effort and through his doubt, a lot of non-Muslims came to know and accept Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our Sheikh and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase him in knowledge. And so, brothers and sisters in Islam, this meeting is not like uh, other meetings. It's a special meeting. Our special guest. So please listen attentively. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us benefit from the knowledge and from the lecture that he's going to give us. Sheikh Muhammad Abu was born in Ghana, and Alhamdulillah, right now he has established an uh, institution for Dawa. It is called uh, Zaytun Training Center. Its headquarters is in Nigeria, that is in West Africa. So, listen and benefit from the knowledge of Sheikh. أوفي الله السميع العليم من شيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقل جاء الحق وزهق الباطل إن الباطل كان زبوكا نزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين ولا تتزال من إلى حساب الله مرة بشرح لي سردي ويسر لي عمري وحلو قتل من لساني في أوضه Again, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making it easy for you and I to be Muslims We can never be Muslims unless the kindness of Allah أفهم من شرح الله بسرد قول لك السلام فهو على نور من ربك If Allah wants you, if Allah loves you Allah will give you heaven and earth. He expands your breast and he infused Islam in it. So woe unto the heart that is devoid of glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, we live in the 21st century. This is the era of knowledge, the era of research, the era of landing on the moon, doing miracle with knowledge. In the Qutbah, we mention that Allah mentioned equal. Read Muslims. Read. So Allah said, Ikra Musa Ila Ikra. Ikra Musa Ila Ikra. Well, see how they use it as a punching bag, as a dogmat. We need to go back to, you know, uh, where Islam was. So we know because in, this, in the 9, 10, 11, 12, up to 16th century, the Muslims were ruling the world. Hands down, we forced Europe to enter into Renaissance. At that time, the Europeans were living in caves. Muslims were bubbling with information. As you remember, in Darul Hikmah, in uh, Iraq, that is when the research 
in the Quran, what the Quran said, Afala Tazakarun, Afala Tazakarun, Afala Yaktun, Afala Tazakarun, Quran is forcing you, don't you think, don't you look, don't you analyze? The Quran is giving you that kind of leeway to rise up and get knowledge. Knowledge is power. You have knowledge, you have everything. And if you travel from here to, let's say, any country, you have your luggage, they're going to check your luggage, how many luggage, how much does it weight, and you pay the amount. But if you have your knowledge and wisdom, anywhere you go, you carry your knowledge along. Then they're going to say, Mr. Ibrahim, uh, Sheikh, can we weigh your knowledge? Uh, you're going to have to pay a certain amount because you have too much knowledge. They're going to do that. And you leave and sleep and wake up to your knowledge. Then you impart it. That is powerful, man. We have to read. So, the world today is boasting non Muslims, especially the atheists, the agnostic, the gnostic, the free thinkers, the nihilists. You see, they are proud of science. Atheists is proud of science. We land on the moon. In fact, we, when we were going out in the moon, we look around, we didn't see Allah, we didn't see no heaven. And we didn't see no hell. What do you mean? Allah, He knows that they will make such statements. So in the Quran, at the very beginning, in Mecca, Allah revealed the Quranic ayah. Qul tajabu Muhammad, la inni jtama'atu li insu wa li jinn, ala an ya'atu li misli khazal Quran, la ya'atu na li mislihi, wa lo ka'ana ba'adu hum libra li zahira. If the whole of mankind and jinn were to come together to bring the book, like the Quran, they will never be able to do it, even if they support themselves from any angle. Think, what kind of statement is this? Who talk like this? That means whosoever make those statements have to have an inside polypiety mind, infinity. Why would the messenger risk his life and the deed by saying no one will write the book like the Quran? Okay, what if somebody write the book that supersedes the Quran? That means the Quran is but Allah He knows the infinite wisdom of Allah. Mankind could not write it. All of my guy and Jim, the Arabs were listening, they couldn't do anything. Then Allah reduced the challenge again. This time he said, I'm here one of the Do they say Muhammad falls the Quran? Alright, call it Fakhti the Ashik Sulin, Mr. of the Rabbi. Then bring ten surah this time, forge like the Quran, and bring your witnesses. Hello. I mean, nobody brought about it. A year before the messenger left Mecca to Medina, Allah reduced the challenge again. What we could do if he read the Yuma, the Sanda, Ara Abdina, Faktu, the Surah to the Muslim, what the Ushu Adaha could be doing with Allah, in good to say, and then Allah said, For in and Tafalu, what I Tafalu, for the Ummah, and 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 If you are in doubt, O mankind, as to the wisdom, as to the revelation we've given our apostle, all right, then bring one Surah, one. Forge like the Quran and bring your witness if you are speaking the truth. Allah said, You cannot do it. You will never be able to do it. If that is the case, prepare yourself for the fire whose fuel is man and storm. For from the very beginning, Allah has laid down foundation. Intellectuals are boasting about the heaven, the earth, we land on the moon, we did this. They run all around the world giving lectures about the prowess of knowledge. There is a man in America by the name Joseph Bloom. Joseph Bloom is one of the best minds in atmospheric pressure. He said, We have found the quantum to believe that the heaven and earth is actually divided in seven different layers. He said, Science and research have given us clear perspective to believe that the heaven, the moment you lift up the earth, you go through seven different layers. And he gave us the name, and he even told us each and every heaven the duty it, it performed for mankind. The first one, troposphere, stratosphere, ionosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere, and hexosphere. These are the seven layers above the heaven. Not just that. He said, troposphere is the level where snow and rainfall take place. And that is true. Thermosphere is the level of you know, acoustic. 
that's supposed to be sending back echo. So right now, if I dial your number on my phone, your phone begins to ring. No, that is not the case. It goes to atmosphere. That is where the station, their satellites, different, you know, telephone company, they have their station settled over there on atmosphere because atmosphere is the level that sends back echo. So when I dial your phone, within one hundred of a second. <coughs> goes to atmosphere and then it pinpoint your location on earth and your phone begins to ring. Thermosphere. Then we have the ozonosphere that is the ozone layer which protects mankind from harmful radiation that comes to earth and destroys our life. Especially the spiral arm of the sun emitting billions and billions of atmospheric you know of, 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 of uh, harms certain kind of flare that is not good for our body. Once it reached ozonosphere, ozonosphere, it sent back harmful radiation to where it came from and it allowed the beneficial ones to come to earth so we could benefit of it. So each and every heaven have its duty. According to Joseph Bloom, Allah mentioned that in the Quran long before Joseph Bloom even think of that. The Quran was revealed today, 1,444 years. How many times in the Quran? Allah will say, Halika Sama Sama Awad, Wamina the Ark, Mithra the Holna. Allah is the one that created the seven heaven and of the earth. The same number. Okay. That means the earth is also divided in seven different days. But in most cases, it is mentioned only once in the Quran. Wamina the Ark, Mithra the Holna. Once. But the rest, how many times? This Halaka Sabawat is mentioned only in seven places in the Quran. Seven places interspersed in the Quran. Only once Allah mentioned, the earth is also divided in seven. Of course, we know today scientists have developed you know, a data that clearly shows. So, the earth that we live on right now is the, you know, where we, you know, we plant our food, we build our house, that is continental crust. This is the crust that we live. The next level of the earth going down is astonosphere. Isonosphere, after astonosphere, lithosphere. After lithosphere, we have the mantle crust. Then we have the soft iron core. Then we have the solid iron core. Each and every one of them on earth is divided in seven. So how could the messenger Muhammad in the desert, far from civilization, without any computerization, be able to quantify in his mind that the heaven is divided in seven? The Quran mentioned long before they did. Wamina the Ark, Mithra the Hunna. And earth also is divided in seven, according to the Quran. Who told the messenger Muhammad in the desert? Maurice Bukhari, a French scientist, he said, Indeed, the Quran has presented a genuine challenge to mankind, leaving only one alternative that this Quran must be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the information in the Quran is nowhere to be found in the 7th century. He said, It's a challenge. He said, Not Muhammad. Not the Sahaba, no one in the 7th century will be able to give us information that is consistent with today. No one. You know, I was told that uh, in California, you guys are hungry with rain. And I called New York yesterday, they said the rain, man, they couldn't go to work. There's too much rain. I don't know, we don't have no rain. I don't know, maybe we make to work, Allah will give some rain. But in New York, I spoke to my wife. She said, I couldn't go to work, I have to go to work. I said, why? I said, because too much rain. I said, no, no, no. For many years, we don't have no rain here. The rainfall that you see, the you know, weather forecasters, meteorologists, they come on television. It's going to rain here and rain there. They're going to give us an account. A week, it's going to rain today in the morning by 11 o'clock. It's going to rain and then I speak, he owned the hell. How do they know that? They sent balloons in the atmosphere. It takes a picture of the rarefied materials. See, you think that the rain just fall. If you look at the heaven before it rains, there are certain clouds called cumulus clouds. They move independently. 
when they join together, they become what we call homolimnibus. When it becomes so big and darkened like a mountain, it begins to go updraft. Inside of it, rain begins to fall. That is how rain falls. It's a simple mathematics that you would have to go to school for thousands of years to get that knowledge. The Quran simply spelled it out. And I said, Adopter and Allah are used to Sahaba. From where you are, if you are in a room, from where you are in a room, 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 you are in a room. Allah is talking to the scientists. Do they not see how we move the class gently? Then we join them together, then they acquire that mountain head look that is upright. Father and Walker, Yahweh to the Hilani. Then we send down water from the heaven to earth. Three principles movement of the clouds, joining together, updraft, rainfall. That is exactly how it falls. And the rain that falls, we think is haphazardly. No, it is measured. Many years ago, less than 40 years ago, a British man by the name Edward Barrow, he discovered what we call barometer. Barometer is a mechanism we use to measure the rain gauge. So we know today the rain that falls from heaven to earth, we know how much you know how much rain falls. And we know how much rainfall, you know, um, evaporates in space. We know it's a circle. The Quran mentioned that in the desert, without any computer, no barometer. Allah said, Watch. That's what I'm looking for. He is Allah who sent that water from the heaven in a measured form. Measured form. In other words, it doesn't fall haphazardly. It falls here. So we know today, through barometer and red gauging, every second as we speak, 16 million tons of water fall from the heaven to the earth every second. The same amount evaporates to the space and then it continues. That means every year we have 539 trillion tons of water that fall from the heaven to the earth. The same amount evaporates. The question is, how could the messenger Muhammad in the desert of Arabia without any computerization, without any mechanism, be able to make mention that the, the rain that fall is indeed measured. The moment there is disproportion in the rainfall, it will cause the destruction of the environment, the ecosystem will change. It will bring imbalances and the earth will not be habitable again. And scientists are proud with it. And the Quran mentioned that. So scientists are late. The Imam was reading an ayah. It is not part of my talks. As he read that ayah, I said, uh oh, here go another science again. So I stopped it in my mind. What he was saying in the Quran, he was speaking about powerful information that only scientists or those who have scientific knowledge about what is happening in the space could only know. Allah said in the Quran. Okay, there is a space in the heaven. You know, the extra galactic material which created the heaven and earth through the Big Bang, the leftover, science called that extra galactic dust. This dust aggregated and then it was in the depth of the heavens, the aggregation of the leftover. Give you an example. If you are in the desert, you're driving, you know, uh, some truck. <laughs> the moment you go, the, the, the residue, the smoke, the, whatever you left behind, that dust collected together. Science called that extra, extra galactic dust. But the main primal material is called interstellar galactic material. The extra ones that remain behind aggregated and form what we have black hole or process or the white hole. It depends on how you call it. Science are telling us to that that location every 15 seconds over 1 million stars come out of that location. I'm going to repeat and I want you to think how powerful Allah is. Every 15 seconds over 1 million stars are being born from that location. And that is what he mentioned. Allah said, I swear, 
by the location of the stars. This is a powerful swearing. If you know the implication of that swearing, that's what the Imam read. It's a powerful swearing because that location is what science are saying is the location of the stars. Some call it the seedbed of the stars. Some call it the nursery of the stars. Every 15 seconds, over 1 million stars. Each star is bigger than our sun, our atmosphere, our galaxy, our everything. Each star. So where do they go? Where do they go? Every 50 seconds, from 20 billion years ago, it is the stars that have been born. <laughs> Where do they go? Where do they go? How, how, how can you quantify this? It is too great. Where do they go? To give you an example, if the expansion is still ongoing, because science called that the expanding universe, if this expansion should stop right now, it will take mankind with the most powerful instrument and target over 100 billion years to be able to count all the stars. So now, it is expanding. That is the hypothesis. The, the, the expanding universe. The universe is perpetually expanding from the Big Bang. Boom! To know that model, if you know any stagnant water, get a stone, throw that stone in the water, what you see is the ripple effect. You see that the water is expanding. That, that explains how the universe is perpetually expanding. I don't know who told us young man, and you tell me. You tell me. Look, the scientists are late. They are so late. We've just developed a mechanism called MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging. That's a new science. Why is it that we developed that machine? Okay, science did that. You say it becomes critical. They put you in the MRI. They put you in the cell up. They put some electrolysis all around your body. Once they push you inside, okay, then they begin to look. The location of your sickness, the position that they are looking for, it will begin to break. They will mind, oh, that's the problem. So if they want to know the part of your brain that causes anger, they can put the electrolysis all over you, it puts you in MRI, it magnifies and resonates, and then it gives the image MRI. How the science know that? That's how they know. This part of the brain is responsible for this. This part of the brain is responsible for this. Today, scientists are telling us that here, the prefrontal cortex, the cerebral, this part of the human being is responsible for lying and sinful thing. At the same time, it is responsible for doing good. The motto right here in your forehead, the prefrontal cortex, is responsible for two things. If you lie, it comes from your, not from here, it comes from the forelock. If you do anything good, it comes from the forelock. This is a new science, less than 55 years ago when science developed that. But the Quran mentioned that over 1,444 years. The question is, who told the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? How could he have known no one in the desert? Allah was warning Abu Jahl. Let him be careful. Let him be what? Let him take warning. If he does not stop giving the messenger endless problem, if he does not stop, we watch this. We shall hold him by his forelock. Then Allah said, a lying and sinful forehead. What? <laughs> we don't speak like that. Mr. A, you lied to me. Yes. I don't go saying, Mr. A, your forehead lied to me. The Quran points the part that is lying. And scientists have proven it. Who told the messenger? Scientists are late. They are too late for anything. How do you do that? You know, um, there is this uh, the body of Ram. Allah has blessed me. And I went to Egypt. 
There is a valley in Egypt called the Valley of the Thieves. That is where they bury most of the pharaohs. So, three years ago, when I went to Egypt, I said, I can't go and see this. I give lecture on this one. I have to go and see. So, Alhamdulillah, I was charged to see the body of Pharaoh now. Lying down in his neck. Why the body of Pharaoh now? Allah mentioned about the case of Pharaoh. The Bible never mentioned, the Bible mentioned in the book of Genesis that Pharaoh died in the water. Him and the chariot. The Quran also said, Pharaoh died in the water, but he was saved. So in the 18th century, Professor Lorenz, who specialized on the mummies, the Pharaoh mummies, so he went there and uh, in the valley of the kings, thieves. So they brought up many, many. So he saw a particular pharaoh. It contained, it has so many artifacts around him. So Professor Lawrence said, Wow, this can be a very important pharaoh because of the artifact around him. So they brought it up. Now they want to know who is this particular pharaoh in the 18th century. They brought it up. What they do is they carbon date the body with potassium test. Carbon dating is to cut a part of the body of the pharaoh and then they did some kind of uh, research computerized with, uh, um, with potassium test on the machine. It tells you exactly which year did this pharaoh lose his life. It also tells you carbon dating with potassium test, carbon 14 actually. How did this pharaoh die? So when they did that, it shows them that this pharaoh died in the water. It also tells them through the, the year that this pharaoh died over two to three thousand years ago. So everything points to the fact that this pharaoh must be the pharaoh of Moses. The day that they brought this pharaoh out of this, uh, you know, uh, out of the, you know, uh, you know, in his resting place. They took it to London, took it to Germany, took it to all over the world, in America. Eventually, it was returned back to Egypt, in the great museum of Egypt. People from all over the world, especially the Jewish in diaspora, they have to come and see. This is the, the Pharaoh that gave us endless problems. They saw that Pharaoh. They were like, what? This Pharaoh gave our ancestors hell. Their ancestors catch hell in the house of Pharaoh. So a lot of them came from all over the world to look and see this pharaoh. If they could beat them up, they could do that. But it is in the, in the, in the cage class, you can't can touch it. But we have to see the pharaoh. What did Allah say about this scenario that we just mentioned? When Pharaoh was in the water, he realized that he's going to die, no way out. So now he, he's going to lie. He's going to play a game with Allah. But, Ah, yeah, Allah, I believe in uh, you know, uh, the God of uh, Moses and Harun. No. Allah said, Allah, for the Okay. Few minutes ago, you were Muslim. You caused chaos on land. Fitna. And now you want to accept the, the God of Moses. Then Allah said, For the young one, you might jig and be botanically to Puna, live and help a ayatan, what in the Kasir and the Nas and Ayatina. Over our this day we will save you in your body so that you will become a sign for those who will come. Now, what And today the body of Rauna is at stake. You will go to the Egypt, go to the Muslim. You see, they understand. He's a sign. No book, no book of antiquity may mention that the body of Rauna will be retrieved from water, even the Bible. Those who crossed with Moses, eh? the Bible simply said the chariot of, 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 of Pharaoh and you know his men were overturned in the water and eventually they all died full stop. The Quran said they died. It also made mention about some information that no anyone ever mentioned that, that the body will be retrieved. And alhamdulillah, the body was retrieved. And today we are very happy that we have, you know, the body of Pharaoh. In Minnesota, those of you who go to Minnesota, they have uh, a very dense, you know, uh, forest. 
in Colorado and few other states that they are saying that they have seen Bigfoot, Sasquatch. Yeah, we have the sighting. You see, on television, they do have some program. Uh, they're trying to find Bigfoot. They didn't see him, like, but they feel that there's got to be something Bigfoot, you know, some describe him, sort of like an alien, but huge. They said that everybody's bringing that, you know. Uh, the Indian have their own, they call it Sasquatch, and then we say the Bigfoot. This is something that exists. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. We don't know, we're still looking. They think it exists because their infrared mechanism captures something like that, but they haven't put their hand on it, but at the back of their mind, something like Bigfoot exists. Some people say, no, there's got to be something. We can see something in the atmosphere. When we go, we see something. There's UFO. What is that? Unknown foreign object. They think something exists. We've seen, you know, a disc moving, and then it vanished. We no, it's got to be something. Scientists, they send balloons, they send human beings, I mean, not human beings yet, but they send rover machine to land on Mars. The intention is to see if there is water on Mars. If there is water on Mars, that means there is human being also on Mars, or at least some life do exist on Mars, the red planet. But scientists think that something is going on. We are not alone. No, we are not alone. I didn't say that. I don't know. But Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alameen. To stop being like Osama, I want to sell our Arab. Watch this. Woman fi hinna. Wa ibn shayi illa. Bihamdihi. Wa lakin. Ya tarqahuna. Glory unto Allah. Who created the heaven and earth and in between them. And the beings, the creatures that are in between them. They also glorify Allah. But Allah said, Wa lakin. You, mankind, cannot understand how these beings glorify the love. That tells me that there's got to be some form of life somewhere that we don't know yet. So when are we going to see these kind of beings? When are we going to see them? Allah gave us the answer in the Quran. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ حَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَسَ فِيهِمَا مِنْ دَابَتِهِ وَهُوَ عَلَى جَمْئِهِ Allah said, among the signs of Allah is that He created heaven and earth and He put creatures in between them. And He has the power to bring them when the time is right. That means something is there. I don't, I, I've never seen anything like that, but according to this verse, there are other beings or other creatures that we haven't seen yet. I'm going to digress my talks to one of the most important findings, biologists, you know, in the womb of our mothers. We live there for nine months. We spam, blood, muscle, bones, meat. So we become human beings eventually. If you look at like like shrimp, you know shrimp. When you cook a shrimp, it's cold. But that's how we are. So if I ask you a question, can you remember when you were entering in the womb as a sperm? If there's anyone who can remember, can you raise your hand? I mean, you know, <laughs> can you remember that, right? It's a miracle. The miracle of that is ten times over. An outstanding miracle that we can't even quantify. Allah said in the Quran. Okay, scientists are saying once the fetus in the womb begins to develop after it reached 26 weeks, after 26 weeks, it enters into different sacks. Three different layers of sacks. This is by one of the celebrated scientists, Keith Elmore, Professor Emeritus. He lives in uh, Canada in his book that he mentioned. He said that the information that we have about embryology today, that of the Quran, gives us more perspective. We can see 
The Quran speaks about the big picture of what is happening in the womb, as opposed to us who depend on things to be. But see, the Quran speaks for us about that. So they ask Professor King Elmo, who asked him? Chef Abdul Hadou Zindani, who lives in Yemen, one of the great minds of Islamic science. Great mind. Another one is in Egypt, I forgot his name. Zabulul Najah. If you know Zabulul Najah, that is where there is a time, a few years ago, I had a con contact with him. Whatever new science, I said, Sheikh, just give me, give me, I'm going to get down and say, give me. He said, okay, this is what happened. He gave me the liar, and I'll do the research, and I will send that information to him, how I fixed it. And he said, mashallah, this is correct, this is correct. It's a blue in the job. Subhanallah, that man is a gifted, he's just a gifted human being that Allah has given him. The ability to look at the Quranic verse and make it look like it's just happening. So we should go on internet and check him out. So they say, when we were in the womb between 25 to 36 weeks, we entered into three different sites. Science called that, you know, um, epimetric, andromatic, and the other one, myometric. Three different layers. That we are in the womb. Three different layers that we are in the womb. That means we are protected. Three different layers. So, how come the Messenger of Muhammad, Sallam, through a past you know, inspiration, Allah said, you were created from the womb of your mothers from one stage to the next stage in three veins of darkness it is so dark at that level that I cannot see scientists yesterday they developed that information so but how did, how did the messenger knew this information so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the Quran when I came, this Quran is not such that anyone will write. On the contrary, it is from the fountainhead of Allah's knowledge that He sent to Muhammad. Allah bear witness to the fact that. He Allah bear witness to whatever he revealed to Abu Muhammad. And the angels also bear witness that Allah said, No, I Allah, I am the ultimate witness that whatever I send to you is from my own fountain knowledge that I've given to you. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa could not have known. He couldn't have known this information. Even if, let's assume Muhammad, Sheikh, who's who you go to? Imagine, what's the name of this? Let's assume the messenger went to Jabhat of Islamia. Let's assume. Or maybe, you know, Al Azhar, a doctor, and he banned a PhD, or Umul Quran in Basra. Let's assume. Still, at the time, he's not, no disclosure. There's no way he would give us this key information that is consistent with our life. The Quran can never be changed. You cannot change the Quran. Allah preserve the Quran as it is given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any other, right now, I have more than 40 different Bibles in my house. I'm always buying new Bible. Very ingenious. Because they're always changing. They keep changing new ones. Otherwise, why would you say revise standard version? Revise. Who are you? To revise the word of Allah? You would have revised it to fit in. <laughs> no. The Quran is for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And the language is a miracle. Those who speak Arabic very well, who understood the research in uh, Balada, they could clearly give you an example that the Quranic verses was meticulously chosen to place in certain verse to make another sense. Indeed, each and every letter is a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. An outstanding miracle. An outstanding miracle. So when the Quran mentioned, that we are in the veil of our mothers from one stage to the next stage in three veils of darkness. 
our mothers. So Alma said, let me give you advice. We were saying that in Islam, you are the day. Let's go to Mufu Wahana, Ada Wahana. Go on up, Officer Nabufi, Amin, and his school, and you are the day. And I said, an advice to you. You should know that your mom, she carried you in the womb from pain, on top of pain. Wahana, Ada Wahana. Day after, Two years waiting, the difficulties of two years. You remember when you begin to walk? When you were a baby, you stumble, you can't even walk, you, you can't even crawl, you sit, and you go like this. You know, we all do that. And then you, 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 you go in there, oh, he's crawling, sweet. And the father came back, come back from work, the mom said, oh, he crawled, he did. Come, come, he grow. He grow. And then he begin to hold on to the table. He walk. And he fall. And he walk. And he fall. The legs are not stuttered. There's a whole ground. Then it begin. Then the first day you took your step. Come, come. Oh my God, he's... He just walked. And that is sweet. Everybody's happy. The father is happy. MashaAllah. The kid is walking. It's beautiful. I remember the difficulties that our women folks are going through. You wonder what, why I'm speaking like this. I have a lot of reasons. We live in the western part of the world. You have to give due right to where it belongs to. The fathers, they work so hard. They go into the sun, difficulties working. And the children, they get their bread. We don't even know where they get their school fees. We don't even know how they give us food. We want the latest shoe. And the mom, She's always in the kitchen, fixing. Even if she's tired, she's fixing. And the children she bore, it's not only her name, it's the father's name. That's my son, as if she was, <laughs> that's my son. Yeah, that's true. So some the man came to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, after worshiping Allah the way he's supposed to, and saying him, who else should I give my you know, attention to? The Muslim said, your mother. So okay, Ya Rasulullah, after that, who else? He said, your mother. He said, okay, who else? Your mother. And the fourth time, he said, your father. And we got a big problem. I'm sorry, forget about the woman. I think we got a big problem. We got to work it out, man. Because out of 100%, 75% belong to the woman, according to the soul. Mother, mother, mother. One time, us. Why? Because of the pain that we go through. For nine months! Carry you and me, Muhammad Awad. I was in the womb. Some scholars say when we were in the womb, we were thieves. Because she eats, we take the food away from her. She drinks, we take it away from her. She's always hungry. She can't even sleep like this. She can't sleep, sleep like this. So you and I have a comforter. Mother! I wish my mom was alive. She passed like seven years ago. With the understanding that I have, I would spread my most beautiful clothes, I would spread it down. Let her walk on it. Let her walk on it. When it's time to give birth, what happened? She's so big. You are inside. I am inside the womb. The doctor said she's not going to give birth naturally. We need a dagger, a knife, a sword to cut her open. Yup. <clears throat> so, honey, mom, you're going to cut my mom? Just because of me to come up? Because I'm too big. Because if she gives back, we don't know, it's going to be trauma. <coughs> so, it's traumatizing. Either she died, or we both died, or the baby, either way, is traumatizing. Then she gives back to us. And that's the summa sabina, that's the road. When it's time to come, and I make it easy, and you come out of the passage. You and I. We were poor when we came. We don't have nothing. Not even a credit card. And we got no clothes on. We were naked when we came. Do not. Nothing in our head. No PhD. No master's degree. No CEO. Nothing. And when we came. 
what happened? Allah did not leave you alone. He gave us two reservoirs, two suspended on the chest of our mothers. Two of them. All you have to do is to flip your little leg and you grab it. You enjoy your lunch or your dinner or whatever that is. After six weeks, Allah changed the contents of the milk. Put certain, you know, zinc and iron and antibodies. You see, at the base of the level of the breast, there is something that there is some kind of emission that it emits antibodies to protect you from misery, from diseases. That is our mothers. She could say, okay, take some of my, you know, days, my years. If I'm going to spend it 100 years, ya Allah, if you could take some of my years to add it to my son or my daughter, she'd be happy. Our mother would do that. She grabbed you when you came with the Maya, blood, umbilical cord, everything. She put you on the chest and she hold you. We have to be merciful. Most of the time, I say this because the women, like I said, they are out in the war front and they lose. So once in a while, if you go outside, buy her some chocolates. Yeah, be a man, you don't do that. Get her some chocolate. If you go to the chocolate here, I don't know about here, maybe they have, but in New York, they have that chocolate here. You could go, they have a machine, they could print your wife's name on it. Beautiful name, different calligraphy, whatever you want. So when you come home, close your eye, Habibi. Say what? Just close your eye. Okay, open. <sighs> you got my name on the chocolate? <laughs> Do you know the impact of that? It's different. I don't know. Women, they are like cats. I'm not saying they are cats, please. Don't get me wrong. But you know, cats, they go around you and they play with you and they, that's all they want. If you could do that, once in a while, just take, take a walk by the seaside. Once in a while, you see, doing that, it injects a new spirit of life. It is as if you've just got married again. So very important. And our children, what I wish we should know who is their friend, where do they go? How do they go? Educate them in Islam. What why? Give them Islam. Because today, once you finish your salat, what do you do? You raise it. Oh Allah, have mercy on my parents the way they have mercy on me. Do we have any guarantee that after we go, our children will say, Allah, Educate them in Islam. Educate them. Do the best that you can. If you rise up to do the best that you can, Allah will support you. Allah will give you an If you rise up to do the best that you can, Allah will support you. Allah will give you. And how they will out to understand what to do and how to do it. Because they are our next generation. The responsibility is going to fall on their shoulder. And they will be the next people to take Islam to the next level. So if you don't give them Islamic education, subhanAllah, or you will believe, protect yourself and those under you, your children, your wife, and the hellfire. If you don't do the hellfire, who do you have to ask That hellfire, the fuel is bent and stone. I'm not scared. Then Allah says, again, Malaika, Gilad, Shilad, Daya, Asuna, Baha, Amar. All this thing is to prepare our youth, our young, with education. Otherwise, we have a big problem. If it's my wish, I'm going to keep speaking. Me and I can talk from now till the kingdom come. I don't have a problem with that. I can talk and that's my job to talk. So if you allow me, you don't hold my leg, I'm going to keep speaking. My time is out. I'm being notified. I have to respect the chair. Hazar bin Ali Tofi. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh.
Y Messi. The the hour, this the verse is you know uh, specifically speaking about you know um, the heaven. The moment you lift, even if you jump, if you jump for a second, you jump, you are out of the earth. If you jump, you are in the space. So all the speech that Allah is talking about is between the earth and the heavens, the earth and the heavens. So. The person, in fact, who let us understand this information is called Van, Van Allen, Professor Van Allen. So they call that thing uh, the Van Allen Belt. is protecting the earth, allowing good things to come and bad things to go. So Allah said, وَجَعَنَّ السَّمَاءَ سَكْفًا مَحْفُوزًا وَهُمْ أَنْ آيَاتِهَا they do, we set up in the heaven a protected area, safe and well guided. All these things are following certain principles that they can never alter. This is what forces Albert Einstein to believe towards the end of his life that God exists. He's a Jew, he's supposed to believe in one God, but because of too much science and pride, he doesn't want to keep that you know, respect to anybody. He said, There's no God. But towards the end of time, before he left the earth, Albert Einstein said, in his, in, his, in, his, in his memoir, which was written in Latin, he said, at last, we have found the quantum which made us to believe that the heaven and earth was created. He said, whosoever created heaven and earth is a good mathematician. He asked him why. He said, because everything fits in like a jigsaw puzzle. The wind, the air, the variation, the night and day, it follows every principle that nature or chance cannot create. So all these things talk about the heaven, and the earth. Immediate earth and the heaven. Whatever happened in between them is what they're talking about. Yeah. How much of the information uh, about uh, the earth and the, the all, 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 all this amazing planets mentioned in any book besides the Quran? Okay. The, my brother here, my elder, is asking, uh, Dr. Hadaya, asking a very beautiful question. He said, how much of this information is in, is, it, is, there any, is, is it part of, is, is, is it in any book, right, that is being stored as information? In fact, I wrote the book, Islam and Science, Volume 1, deep, I explained a lot of things. But when I, when I, when I was coming here, my book is finished. So I couldn't break it. I was going to break it, but it's finished. So I promise next time if I'm coming, inshallah, I'm going to bring all my books that I wrote. Islam and Science, Volume 1. Islam and Christianity, Volume 1. 99 Reasons Why Jesus is Not God. Then the fourth one is The Open Space. What is happening in the space? Which is also a very, very important good book that any time I print, is finished. So I promise next time when I'm coming, I'm going to bring them here. And then, in fact, I would like the young, you know, coming up, 
this this my young kids, I want them to have it. Read it. They will respect the Quran. They will believe in the Quran more. And they will really be the next generation who will read the first knowledge through the Quran, inshallah. So it's there. But we have other books also that talks about, like uh, Professor, Professor Kazi, who is from Egypt, I believe. His book, The Self Evident Miracle of Quran, is very, very important. That book I read it a lot. Anytime I read that book, Professor Kazi, K A Z I, from Egypt, the book is The Self Evident Miracles of Quran. That book is uh, very, very deep. The books, in fact, you can get it on Amazon, but it is it, it was on Amazon for like five years ago, but now I'm having difficulties. There is some kind of difficulty if you order through Amazon. You could order through, if you go to Amazon, you just type Sheikh Mohammed Awal's book. Sheikh Mohammed Awal book, you see that it's come from Amazon. But somehow, how to buy, I don't know what it is, we're having difficulties on how to. But you see the books, all my books are there, inshallah. But I promise, young man, when I come next time, I'm going to give you one for free. And I'm going to give you one for free also. You too, you're going to get one for free. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to inject you with the spirit of reset, okay? For you guys to be the next whoever. <laughs> yes. Was it discovered that there's uh, time, time and space? Yes. Yeah, it, it was the scientists who discovered that. Meanwhile, the Quran mentioned that. Halakha sawa as samawat. Halakha sawa as samawat. Sawa as samawat. The Quran is always saying the seven heaven and the earth. The seven heaven and the earth. This is recently, but the Quran mentioned that long before scientists even think about it. That makes the Quran a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Any questions from Sister Sai? No question?
on the finish they get certificate also. Crash course. So I'm gonna do it with different masters. Inshallah, information technology, some how to present Islam, how to how to do research, everything, package. So inshallah, I'm gonna be doing that when I come. I promise any next year, inshallah. Any next year, inshallah. Any question? Dr. Hadaya wants to mention something. Dr. Hadaya. <laughs> Mashallah. Dr. Adai is asking one of the signs that lack of time I couldn't mention that. Uh, he was talking about in Surah Al Rahman, where Allah said, Maraj al Bahrain, the Tikiya and Baida Huma Barza Mullah Yabiya, Fabiha Yahadar and Kumar Kazban. Maraj al Bahrain, two bodies of water. That is one of the most powerful information in the Quran. Two bodies of water, one sweet and one salty. They do meet, but if they meet, they don't become one homogeneous. Out of the mercy of Allah. These two, the other one is strong, the one with the salt, salty, and then the fresh water, like the Atlantic Ocean, and the Red Sea, or whatever, sea, those that have no salt. Once they meet, they do go in and come out, go in and come out. It was developed by a Muslim, long time, long before, long, very long time, in the 12th century. The book, the information was given in, you know, Darul Hikmah in Baghdad, Muslim were doing what this. So this brother, who was a Muslim, he was making research when Allah said, two bodies of water meet, but they don't become one. The fresh water can go inside the salt water and then come out again. SubhanAllah. And the salt, the fresh water can go inside the salt and come out. There is a barrier, a forbidden barrier in between them. So the brother went to the soul of Gibraltar, Malta, the soul of Gibraltar. So, you hear in geography, they say, the coast of Gibraltar. The coast of Gibraltar. It's Gibraltar. So, in geography, when I was growing up in secondary school, Gibraltar. This is the map of Tariq. He stood there to make that dilation. He researched on that body of water. And Allah Akbar, it is unbelievable. Nobody mentioned that. The Quran somehow mentioned that in the desert. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has never gone on sea voyage, no way. Even if he go, how will he say, you know what, I'm going to write in my Quran, Maraj al-Bahrain, It's not possible. All these are there to prove that the Quran is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That topic alone is 45 minutes topic. The question I, I cannot delve deep into it, but I, inshallah we'll come back and we'll, we'll do some more about that inshallah. Inshallah, next time when he comes back, you know, whatever question you have, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward our sheikh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take him back safely, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all our sins, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us benefit of what we just listened from our sheikh. Uh, sheikh uh, will be back to New York, huh? and Sheikh will be back to New York on Sunday, inshallah. ربنا بلغنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا أنا ربنا بلغنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنقول من الخاسرين ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار الله أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو اسمة أمرنا أصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا أصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا الله يجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل لهم الموت راحة لنا من كل شر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ربنا ونتوب اليك اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين. شيخ ياك يقول لي جواز هذا؟ 